And right now tonight at four, the murder mysteries in Bardstown are becoming clearer with each different court appearance. Breaking news from the arraignment of Brooks Houck this afternoon in Nelson County. Houck appearing via live video for his first court appearance in the murder of Crystal Rogers. And then the surprise no one saw coming. Prosecutors dropping a major bombshell in this case, which has been full of them. Key evidence in the murder of Crystal's father, Tommy Ballard. Our coverage begins right now at four. Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us this afternoon. I'm Doug Prophet. The courtroom packed with family members stunned to learn that prosecutors have the gun they believe was used to kill Tommy Ballard, who was actively leading the search for his daughter. WHS 11 Shay McAllister and chief photojournalist Philip Merle are in Bardstown right now, and Shay, everyone was there to learn if Houck's $10 million bond would hold up. So how did this news about Tommy Ballard come out today? Oh, Doug, well, when you think about a courtroom hearing here, there's a lot of things you expect to happen, and especially in an arraignment, and those things did happen. We talked about the bond reduction. They talked about the thousands, literally thousands of pages of evidence in the case. They also talked about a possible move of venue later on for trial. Here's what we didn't expect. A bombshell in another unsolved Bardstown case. The prosecutor telling us not only are they investigating Tommy Ballard's death, they think they know who was responsible. In front of a packed courtroom, another shocker in the small town murder mystery that just keeps twisting and turning. For the first time, we hear who investigators believe killed Tommy Ballard. Special Prosecutor Shane Young saying they are currently testing a gun that belonged to Nick Houck. We're investigating the murder of Tommy Ballard that could potentially be related to this case. The, we are waiting for testing to come back on the farm we believe was used to murder Tommy Ballard, a farm that we purchased from Nicholas Houck, who was using a fake name when he sold the right. The prosecutor going into detail about why he believes it will be a match. We know it's the same caliber. There's five criteria that the they're looking at, and so far it's matched four of the five criteria. In the front row of the courtroom, the Ballard family looked stunned. Sherry's eyes filling with tears. It was a moment this family has been waiting for. That was feel, feel real good. We, we thought it all along, but after prosecuting Shane made that statement, we felt a whole lot better and I think it won't be too long. He thinks Nick Houck could be the next arrest, but he and Brooks weren't the only ones from the Houck family mentioned in the courtroom. Prosecutor Shane Young accused the family of violating Kentucky law by secretly recording grand jury proceedings. The defendant's sister, Rhonda McElvoy Houck, brother, Nicholas Houck, mother, Rosemary Houck, brother-in-law, Alex McElvoy, and Rosemary Houck's live-in boyfriend, Larry Mott, all recorded, secretly brought in recorders and recorded the grand jury. I've been practicing here, Your Honor, for 25 years in this state, and I have yet, ever, heard of anyone recording a grand jury. He alleged the family was trying to get their story straight, trying to solidify a lie. It's been stated before, the truth will set you free. The problem in this matter is the truth will imprison Brooks Houck. And we're asking your honor to keep the bond the same. The defense did submit a request to lower the bond. It was what we thought would be the most interesting part of court today, but it was only covered briefly. The defense wants it lowered from 10 million to 500,000. Attorney Brian Butler called the current bond oppressive. The grand jury out of Nelson County that set this bond, I have been practicing 28 years. I have never heard of a bond even coming close to this. And I can tell you I've never asked for a $10 million bond. This is the first multi-millionaire I've prosecuted for murder. Young alleges Houck's construction companies, rental properties, and real estate is worth $10 million, if not more. He says this bond is fair for someone who has so much to lose. Ultimately, the judge asked for more time to review the new information. He says he'll make a decision later. And as the courtroom emptied, we had some questions for Rosemary Houck. 
Brooks' mom. Rosemary, the special prosecutor accused you of violating Kentucky law today. What do you have to say about that? Are your sons involved in the deaths of... Did your son Nick Ballard. kill Tommy Ballard? Rogers, like to Did say. your son kill Tommy Ballard, Miss Howe? Is there anything you'd like to say? She didn't stop to provide any answers about her son Nick and the new accusations that he killed Tommy Ballard, but Tommy's dad had these final words. I'm hoping he'll be the next one arrested. In a case that continues to stun Kentucky and the nation, another bombshell comes out of court. One the Ballard family hopes is bringing them that much closer to real justice. And the next court date is set for February, right here in Nelson County. Of course, eventually it won't be here in Nelson County. The defense already told us today they do plan to ask for a change for this trial to be held in a different county so that Brooks Houck can have a fair trial. Now let's dive into that a little bit more. Everyone in the United States has the right to a fair trial, something that Houck's defense team is working hard to guarantee for their own client. So what would a trial with this much media attention actually look like? Judges have relied on six major ways to combat press publicity on a jury. One is a change of venue when the defendant could ask to move the trial to a different area. It would take the trial out of Nelson County into a different county here in Kentucky. Conversely, judges could also bring a jury from another place. So the jurors would, would not come from Bardstown. They would go through an extensive void year process to see if they've heard of it or they know about the case. Juries from other areas might know less or haven't been exposed to the media coverage compared to people right here in Bardstown and Nelson County. There is still a very lengthy process to go before we reach a trial. It could be more than a year before we see Brooks on trial. In fact, today, Brian Butler, the defense attorney in this case, told the judge he doesn't think it's realistic that there will be a trial in 2024. He's already looking ahead to 2025. Well, as you know, Brooks is not the only person in this case, there is a co-defendant. His name is Joseph Lawson, and he was arrested just a couple of weeks before Brooks. A Nelson County grand jury indicted Joseph Lawson on two charges, conspiracy to commit murder and tampering with physical evidence. Lawson was arrested on September 8th. He was arraigned shortly thereafter. The court entered a not guilty plea on both of those charges. The bond was set at $500,000, and his next court date is October 26th. Well, taking a closer look now at this investigation, it has been eight years in the making. It has certainly been a lot of developments, much like today. Every time there is a uh, something happening in this case, there's a twist and a turn. Let's look back now at some of those developments. Crystal was last seen alive on July 3rd of 2015. At the time, the Nelson County Sheriff's Office was handling the case. Brooks Houck told police the couple had fed cows at the family farm and then went home together. He says the next morning she was gone. Four months later, the sheriff at the time announced Crystal was presumed dead. She has vanished. And declared Houck the main suspect. No comment. Thank you. Y'all have a good day. The FBI took over Crystal's case five years later. They'd spend the next two years searching several properties from the home of Brooks' brother, former Bardstown police officer Nick Houck, and the family farm. That brings us to June 21st of this year, when a grand jury indicted 32-year-old Joseph Lawson on two charges, conspiracy to commit murder and tampering with physical evidence. His attorney confirmed it was in connection to the Crystal Rogers case. And finally, the arrest of Brooks Houck, now charged with murder and tampering with evidence on a $10 million cash bond. Eric King and I just sat down this week to answer some of your common questions about the Crystal Rogers case, the other Bardstown murders, and what it's been like to work this investigation for the last eight years. If you're interested, you can find that conversation. It's 20 minutes long. It's on the WHAS 11 YouTube page. Doug? Well, Shay, we've got a lot of questions to go over right here at 4 o'clock. Let's go back to the $10 million bond. Do we have a decision from the judge yet on that? I know the arguments were pretty strong from Brian Butler to lower it. Uh, can you go over those again? Absolutely. Okay, so here was the main case on both sides. Brian Butler said in all of his years of defense work and all of the clients that he has had and that he hasn't represented. He has never seen a bond at $10 million. He said at most $1 million or $3 million, never $10 million. He said that this would kill Brooks Houck's business. This would um, leave his son without a father. 
and that if he were truly to stay in jail until trial on a $10 million bond, it would be an very detrimental to his defense. He wouldn't be able to work with the attorneys the way Brian Butler wants him to. On the other side, Shane Young, the prosecutor, said it was $10 million for a reason. He said he too has never imposed a $10 million bond, but Brooks Houck has a lot of assets three different companies, more than 70 rental properties, huge real estate sales just in recent years. He said for Brooks Houck, $500,000 is chump change. It's nothing. He would most certainly get out. The judge did want time to review all of this. Mo multiple documents were handed over today. So the judge said he's going to read through all of that. He will write a written order. He will submit it online. That's where we'll find out about that bond. Okay, so no decision at this hour as we speak, but of course I know the question you've been asking, the one everybody up here still wants to know, Nick Houck. Uh, he is, was really named in this as a possible in connection with this today, but uh, he remains a free man as we speak tonight. It's a truly stunning development. You don't typically hear investigators, prosecutors mention main suspects before they make an arrest. It was shocking eight years ago when the Nelson County Sheriff at the time called Brooks Houck the main suspect in the case. Today, the prosecutor didn't use the word suspect, but he certainly hinted at a person of interest in Tommy Ballard's murder by saying that he had they had purchased this gun from him. They were testing it and they believed it was used in that case. That was not something we were expecting, Doug. That, that was a huge bombshell today.